So today I'm going to be doing something a bit different. Normally I would be doing a book review or something like that, but today I'm going to be playing a book. Specifically, I'm going to be playing Ian Livingstone's City of Thieves, the 1983 fighting fantasy novel, the fifth book that was released in that series. Um, I'm not sure about Ian Livingstone, but I think Steve Jackson went on to get some fame as a game developer. Um, but these things, everything that you do is rather decided by a dice roll. You have three statistics, skill, stamina, and luck. You have other stuff that you can get along the way, uh, gold, potions, provisions, and, and various other bits of equipment. And we are going to do this, Iron Man, one death, or zero deaths all the way to the end, ideally. Um, and I'm not going to cheat. You can see, on the screen the dice they will be shown for each one so you'll know that i'm not cheating so i'm going to roll for my stats record them on my sheet you'll see them on the screen and then i'll start with the background okay so determine my skill um i have to use one dice and then i add or one die rather and then add six to the score Ooh, handy. Okay, for my stamina, it's two dice and add 12. Bear with me. So that's actually pretty good, and that's eight plus 12 is 20. And given that I've had so much luck so far with the rolls, you know this one's gonna be a one. And for my luck as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's not rely on luck. So I'm, we've got pretty good skill, we've got pretty good stamina. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go at this a little bit like a bull in a china shop and make use of that skill and stamina rather than the luck that we don't have. So you get 10 provisions, sorry, you can use to restore four stamina, but uh, you have to use them when the book says you can, which is not very often, as I recall. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've written that, and it says I can take a potion, and if I take a luck potion, uh, it restores my luck, and it gives me a plus one to my luck. So I'm definitely taking the luck potion. Luck is the only one, I mean, your stamina will go down in fight, in fights, but your uh, skill doesn't go down when you test against it, whereas your luck does. It goes down by one every time you test against it, which being seven, I'm gonna hope is not very often because I'm gonna lose more often than I, well, after I pass, like, if you, assuming I pass the first one, I'm gonna start losing a lot more than I, I win as we go along. Okay, so let's start with the background. You are an adventurer in a world of monsters and magic, living by quickness of wit and skill of sword, and definitely not by luck. You earn your gold as a hired warrior, usually in the employ of rich nobles and barons on missions too dangerous or difficult for their own men. Slaying monsters and fearsome beasts in pursuit of some fable treasure comes as a second nature to you. It is a little bit like being on YouTube, really. Being an experienced and highly trained swordsman, you allow nothing to stand in the way of your quests. Your success on a mission is always assured and your reputation has spread throughout the lands. Whenever you enter village or town, the news of your arrival spreads through the citizens like wildfire, as few of them have ever met a dragon slayer before. One evening, after a long walk through the outlands, you arrive at Silverton, which lies on the crossroads of the main trading routes in these parts. Great wooden wagons hauled by teams of oxen are often seen rumbling slowly through the town laden with herbs, spices, silks, metalware and exotic food from far off lands. Over the years, Silverton has prospered as a result of the rich merchants and traders stopping there en route to distant markets. Its wealth is quite apparent with ornate buildings and richly dressed people are plenty, but as you enter the town gates, something strikes you as not quite right. The people look nervous and on edge. Then you notice that all the windows in the buildings have great iron grills bolted over them and the doors have been strengthened too. 
Although you prefer your own company to that of others, you decide to stay in Silverton for the night to find out who or what is troubling the people. As you walk down the main street, a single note from a bell rings out from a tall tower ahead. Then a man shouts almost desperately, Nightfall! Nightfall! Everybody indoors! You see people scurrying around with anxious faces and looking surprised when they see you. Across the street you see a tavern with the words, The Old Toad, painted on its sideboard, signboard. As you enter the tavern, a whisper runs through the locals as they recognise you. Some put down their mugs and stare. You are somewhat surprised that none come over to hear tales of your adventures. Walking over to the counter, you ask the old innkeeper for a room and a hot tub. But he ignores you and shuffles over to the great oak door, pushing six large iron bolts into place. Only then does he turn to you and say quietly, That will be six copper pieces for the room and one more for the tub, in advance if you please. You reach into the leather pouch on your belt and toss the coins on the counter. He hands you an iron key, but at that very moment there's a loud knocking on the door, followed by a voice shouting, Open up! Open up! This is Owen Caroliff. The old innkeeper shuffles over to the old oak door again and slides open the bolts. Then a fat and balding man dressed in rich scarlet robes bursts into the tavern. Looking around frantically, he sees you and walks quickly in your direction, huffing and puffing. He is a man certainly not used to haste. You notice great beads of sweat on his forehead and the pale candlelight of the room. As he nears you, he calls out, Stranger, I must speak with you. Please sit down. It is important that I speak with you. When he turns to the innkeeper to snap his fingers for food and drink, you can see that he is obviously of some standing in the town, but his face is full of anguish and sorrow. Being curious, you decide to hear what the man has to say. He pulls out a chair for you at the table, bidding you to sit down, and the innkeeper bustles in with a tray laden with hot broth, roast goose and mead. The man in the scarlet robe sits opposite in silence, watching you as you feast, as though examining you for some purpose of his own. Finally, as you push your plate away, the man leans forward and says in a low but anxious voice, Stranger, I know of you and seek your aid. My name is Owen Caroliff and I am the Mayor of Silverton. We are in great trouble and danger. We are living under a curse, and it is I who must rid us of it. Ten days ago, two messengers of evil rode into the town on huge black stallions, stallions with fiery red eyes. It was impossible to see the faces of the riders as they wore long cloaks with hoods pulled over their faces. Their voices were cold, and each word ended with an unnerving hiss. They asked for me by name, and when I came to greet them, they wanted to take my beloved daughter, Mirelle, to stay with their master, Zambar Bone. No doubt you know he is the Night Prince. Of course I refused their demand, and without another word they turned and rode slowly out of the town, heads down and shoulders hunched. I knew then that beneath the cloaks were hidden the skeletal and soulless bodies of spirit stalkers. Zambar Bone always uses them as his messengers, as they will complete their mission or die in the attempt, and they do not die easily. Only a silver arrow through the heart will release those evil beings from the eternal twilight existence. From their eternal twilight existence, sorry. Who knows what it would take to kill Zamba Bone? Anyway, that same night after the spirit stalkers left, our troubles began. The Night Prince was angry and determined to harm us. Six moon dogs came, each stronger than four men armed, each with razor sharp fangs. They stalked through the town, entering homes through open windows and killing the poor people inside. As an adventurer, I will have heard tales like this before, of course, but perhaps this one seems a little far-fetched. Moon dogs, Zambar bone, spirit stalkers. There's a lot to take in there. Perhaps the most important bit is that he mentioned some sort of silver arrow. I'll be sure to look out for one of those on my travels. Let's listen to the rest of his story. In the morning, we counted 23 dead. 23?! So we barred our windows and bolted our doors, yet each night the moon dogs return and we are unable to sleep for fear that they might find a way into our homes. Some people are talking of sending Mirel to Zamba Bone as whimpering traitors. I should have them flogged. But what good would that do? There is but one hope, and that rests with you, stranger. There is a man called Nicodemus who, for reasons I'll never understand, lives in Port Black Sand. The place is commonly called the City of Thieves as it is a home to every pirate, brigand, assassin, thief and evildoer for hundreds of miles around. I think he lives there just to get some peace from the likes of us. He is a wise old wizard and is unlikely to come to much harm even in Port Black Sand for his powers are great. He alone is capable of defeating Zamba Bone. He used to be a friend of mine many years ago. We need him and I beg you to bring him to us. He, none here dares enter Port Black Sand. You will be well rewarded if you help us, stranger. 
Take these 30 gold pieces for your journey and take this sword to use and keep. Owen Caroliff rises. He pulls back his scarlet robe, revealing the finest broadsword you have ever seen. He hands it to you and touching the edge of the blade, you are surprised to see a droplet of blood fall from your finger. Then you examine the marvellously ornate gilded serpents twinning around the hilt. You have never wanted anything so badly in your life. You stand up and hold your, out your right arm to Owen. He shakes it eagerly, saying, You must set off at the first light of dawn. The moon dogs will be gone by then. I should be forced to stay the night here also. So let's drink to our destiny and may the gods be with us. Definitely feel like as an adventurer, I would want to get drunk the night before I set off on this perilous mission. Because, you know, fighting with a hangover is so much fun. For the next hour, Owen talks about your coming journey, explaining in detail how to reach Port Black Sand. Later, you gather up your backpack and furs and climb the wooden stairs to your room. You sleep uneasily despite the security afforded by your new broadsword, as you are more than once woken by sniffing, scratching and howling of roaming moon dogs outside. By dawn, you are already awake and dressed, and determined to reach Port Black Sand quickly to find this man Nicodemus. As you leave the tavern, a black cat scurries past your feet and you almost trip. A bad omen, perhaps. So I'm writing on my thing that we have got. 30 gold that he just gave to us. I assume he did give it to us. Let me just double check, because if he said you get 30 gold on return, then we don't have any gold. I know he did it to use on the journey. Okay. The walk to Port Black Sand takes you west some 50 miles across plains and over hills. Fortunately, without any harmful encounters, eventually you reach the coast and see the high city wall surrounding Port Black Sand and a cluster of buildings projecting into the sea like an ugly black mark. Ships lie anchored in the harbour and smoke rises gently from chimneys. It looks peaceful enough and it's only when the wind changes that you smell the decay in the breeze to remind you of the evil nature of this notorious place. Following the dusty road along the coast of the city gates, you begin to notice fearful warnings. Skulls on wooden spikes, starving men in iron cages suspended from the city wall, and black flags everywhere. As you approach the main gate, the chill runs down your spine. As you approach the main gate, a chill runs down your spine. As you approach the main gate, a chill runs down your spine and you instinctively grip the hilt of your broadsword for reassurance. At the gate, you are confronted by a tall guard wearing a black chainmail coat and iron helmet. He steps forward, barring the way with his pike, saying, Who would enter Port Black Sand uninvited? State the nature of your business or go back the way you came. So I have three choices. I can tell him I wish to be taken to Nicodemus. I can tell him I wish to sell some stolen booty. Or I can attack him quickly with my sword. I'm going to go with this Nicodemus one because that seems like, you know, he's the guard. He might be a bit of an idiot, but he's supposed to be there to help me. So I'm going to tell him that I want to go and see Nicodemus, which is 202. The guard replies that he will send for an escort to take you to Nicodemus. He reaches up to a small bell on the wall of the guardhouse and rings it three times. Almost immediately, two other guards come running out of the house and you are surprised when they each grab hold of one of your arms. The guard with the pike looks up to the sky and laughs, saying, So you want to see Nicodemus, do you? How would you like to see the inside of a dungeon cell instead? Guard, take this fool away to be shackled and throw away the key. Um... So I can attempt to bribe them, I can attempt to fight them, or I can allow myself to be taken away. Now I've got skill 10, but this would be awfully short if I get killed in the first fight against three guards, which seems like rather a lot. I'm going to be taken away, I'm going to go to prison. I'm just going to take all my gold and then I'm in trouble. Hmm. The two guards lead you into the guardhouse and take you immediately downstairs to the cells below. There are four cells and all are empty except for one which houses a frail, white-haired old man. The guards unlock the cell next to the old man's and throw you in, placing your sword on the table outside. The only contents of the cell are a straw mattress and a pail of water. 
The guards go back upstairs and as they disappear, the old man gets up off his bed and starts to speak. You're an outsider, aren't you? Don't reply, it's obvious. Do you want me to set you free? Give me ten gold pieces and I'll have you out in five minutes. The old man then puts his arm through the bars of his cell with the palm of his hand upturned. I can give him the money or I can tell him to get stuffed, which is what I'm going to go with. I'm giving him ten gold pieces. There must be a better way of getting out of prison than paying some fool. He might even scam me. Guards weren't exactly helpful. You squat down on the mattress and consider what to do next. If you wish to feign illness and throw the iron pail against the bars of the cell to attract the guard's attention, or I can inspect the cell closely to try and find a secret escape route. I think I'll do that. I'm going to look for a secret escape route. Okay, so I scratch around in the cracks in the wall and find a loose stone. The old man watches intently as you pull the stone out of the wall. Peering into the hole, you see an iron key. Sweet, I've got a key. It says add one luck point, but I can't add luck and go above the um, the base level, which I, is where I still am. So, With the cell door open, you put the, the key back in the hole in the wall and replace the stone. You leave your cell and pick up your sword of the, from the table. Then you call out to the guards, telling them that you think they're stupid and that you have seen more life on a troll's breakfast plate than in them. Provoked, the guards rush down the stairs and are surprised to see you waiting for them, sword drawn. I'm going to fight them one at a time. Couldn't I have snuck out? Oh well. I've got 10 and 20, and their first one is 6 and 6, and the second one is 7 and 5. Okay, so what I do for a fight is I roll uh, two dice, add my skill. Then I add two dice, roll two dice and add it to their skill. And the one with the highest takes two stamina off the other one. I can use my luck to try and boost that. But uh, yeah, I don't think there's, that it's really worth it. So let's do the first one and see what happens. So I've got 16. He's got six, so if he rolls ten or more, he's going to take some of my stamina off me. Six, twelve. So I've taken his, so he's down to four. Could have tested. Ooh, yeah, well, he can't actually match that because I'm on 21, so he's down to two. So that's 16, so again, ten or more. And uh, so, right, first one be dead. And uh, now I've got to fight the second one. There's quite a lot of dice rolling, isn't there? So again, I'm on 16, which means this guard needs nine. Doesn't get it, so down to three. No, 13. So six or six is a wash and seven that I will take damage. Damn it. We're down at 18. Tis but a, tis but a flesh wound. Oh, come on. 14. So again, eight or more is another wound. Yeah, down a one. So if I'm lucky-ish, I'm not testing for luck, but if I'm lucky-ish, this will be the last one. Fourteen. So again, seven, no, more than seven, and I'll take So, I've survived my first encounter. I've killed the guards. You would think that I would have a little loot of their pockets, perhaps had some gold or a better sword or something, but there isn't. It says, if you win, you climb the stairs. So that's what I will do. Oh, you search the guardhouse and find two gold pieces and a merchant's pass permitting the holder to trade in Port Black Sound. Sweet. The guard at the main gate does not see me and I walk into the city and turn to page 74. 
Through the main gates you see that the rubbish filled streets of the port are narrow and cobbled. Old and decrepit buildings line, line them closely, with their upper stories overhanging menacingly. Yeah, I can go west down Key Street, north along Market Street, or east along Clock Street. Now what do I need? Um, Silver Arrow they said didn't they? Key Street, Market Street, probably Market Street. No, I'm going to go on Clock Street. That's 17. Okay, that was the first like real part where the, the map has like an option. So walking down the narrow street, you see a man wearing tattered rags sitting in the gutter. His head rests on his hands and he looks thoroughly miserable. If you wish to stop to talk to him, turn to 331 or continue east. Well, the guard wasn't exactly helpful, was he? But at the same time, I'm going to need stuff, whatever stuff I don't know, but beyond the silver arrow. Um, oh, I need to find Nicodemus, and he might know that. If he's unhappy, he's probably not horrible, because everybody else in the city so far, like the guards, has been horrible. I'm going to talk to him. He's, he, he seems, if you can see the picture, he seems like a, a friendly chap. Let's have a word. See what he can do. As you approach the man, he suddenly springs up and screams at the top of his voice. He produces a dagger from his ragged clothing and leaps at you. His wild eyes belong to a man insane or possessed, and you must fight him. <sighs> yes, people of the city are so charming. So, I've got 10 and 18 stamina, and he's got 5 of both. Which is quite annoying because it means that I either have to use luck or it has to be three hits. So it may as well be six. So he's got five. So if I roll at any point seven or more, then he simply loses damage because he can't beat my score. Okay, that one shot out, so I'll roll it again. There's seven or more. So I've got 17, he's got five. So he, the best he can do is... The best he can do is double six, and that would be equal. That's 15, so he needs 11. 10, 10 to equal. <sighs> that was equal, so nobody did any damage. He can't match that score, so I'm not even going to roll for him. So he's down to one. Thirteen. So he needs eight to it for a wash and nine to do damage to me. So another fabulous victory for me over the madman. So now I'm going to turn to eighty-six. If you win, turn to page eighty-six. A leather pouch hangs around the neck of the man containing a small glass ball which contains what looks like swirling smoke, will you? Smash the ball on the ground, put the ball in your backpack, leave the ball behind and continue east. I've got to take it at least, haven't I? So... The fact... He was evil, so he's probably got... Well, he was mad, so this thing might have driven him mad. So if I smash it, I'm, gonna ju I'm just going to take it. So I'll put glass ball. I'm not going to smash it, because if it was the thing that drove him mad... Although he was wearing it, so did he smell any of it? <laughs> I can't decide. I hate these sort of games. I'm really bad at them and I hate them. Even on the computer, like an RPG, I will be useless at it and I will hate it. And I will can, can never be bothered to go searching for everything that you need. So I always get to the end and I'm missing something. Right. I'm going to roll the red one. And if it's one, two or three, I'm going to smash it on the ground. And if it's four, five or six, I'm just going to take it. Okay. Four, five, or six, I'll take it. One, two, three, I'll smash it. Just, um, so I'm smashing it. Turn to page 45. 
who are going to be toxic and kill me and I'll be like your adventure ends here the glass ball shatters on impact with the cobbled street on contact with the air the smoke turns a golden colour and then begins to take the shape of a winged helmet the helmet solidifies and rests on the street sparkling in the moonlight it's the most magnificent helmet you have ever seen if you wish to place it on your head turn to 376 if you'd rather leave it alone and set off west again east again sorry why is there not an option to take it with me i've only got two options to wear it or but i might take it with me because you know if it was like it's sparkling in the sunlight so it might be silver i might need to melt that silver down to make the silver arrow that i need all right I'm putting it on my head. I'm being decisive. The helmet fits on your head perfectly, as though it has been specially made for you. It has magic properties also, and will allow you to add one point to all future dice rolls when computing your attack strength during combat, as long as you wear it. Sweet. I can also add a luck point, but um, I can't go above seven, and I'm still on seven, so that makes no difference. And then I'm heading on east. So the street makes a sudden left turn and continues north as far as you can see. However, you notice that around the corner the houses are much bigger, with doorways some four metres high. On the left side of the street you see that a door to one of the houses is open. If you wish to enter the house, turn to 245. Now you always have to, don't you? You have to like search everything, because it's bound to be something that I need like right at the end. And if I don't pick it up now, I can't do the story. Um, I'm a bit wary. Four, four feet high means it's obviously the house of some sort of great big ogre or a monster or something. Perhaps it's Shrek. So I'm going to enter the house, 245. There's a large room with brown walls and a straw-covered floor. There's a musty smell hanging in the air which reminds you of the dirty old cave trolls. Oh, which there is a musty smell hanging in the air which reminds you of the dirty old cave trolls that live in the northern borders. In the middle of the room is a table made from half a barrel with some roughly made stools around it. A high or archway leads through the room to the back of the house from where you hear a low murmuring voice. If you want to walk through the archway, turn to 178 or I can leave and go north. I didn't come in here for nothing, did I? So I've got to walk through. So the archway leads into a large room in the centre of which crouches a human-like creature some three metres tall. He looks very worried and is muttering to himself. The lumps on his face are the distinguishing marks of an ogre. Now I can talk to him or I can attack him. Talking to people has really not worked out so well so far, but sooner or later there'll be that one person you have to talk to and I'll kill him. So I'm going to talk to him. Two, six, four. Before you are able to speak a word, the ogre's voice booms out saying, Somebody has stolen my food. Will you give me some of yours? If I wish to give the ogre some food, I can deduct provisions, two provisions, or I can refuse and go to 157. I don't think I'm ever going to get to use the provisions. So I'm going to give him two provisions. Because, you know, if you're, if you're the nice one, if you make the first move in a friendship, then that is how you will win people to your side. And as an adventurer, why not form a posse? A three metre tall ogre is probably going to be quite useful to me if I can keep him on side. So I'm going to give him the food. The ogre gulps down the food in no time at all. Licking his lips, he turns to you and tells you to get out of his home winning friends and influencing people on every page. If you wish to obey the ungrateful ogre and leave the house heading north, no, or I can draw the sword and teach him a lesson. I got my skill of 10, I'm tough. I'm gonna give him a smack him, turn to 140. Oh, he looks unimpressed by my aggressive action and picking up a large bone as a weapon, lumbers towards you. Oh, yeah, I forgot that he was three meters tall. He's actually really, really good. As J.J. Abrams once said, a babu frick. He's got eight and eight, so I do have an advantage. Plus I've got my plus one, so I must remember to add them for the helmet. Oh, no, 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 I've, I've written it down wrong. He's got eight and nine. So I'm gonna have to hit him five times. Ah, this could be bad. 
them. I'm an adventurer. Killing ogres is what I do. Come on, lucky dice. Not luck of seven, obviously. So I've got six. Ding. And he's got eight. So eight is a wash. Nine. I'm taking a beat and come on, snipers. Down to 16. This did not start well. Come on, lucky dice. Oh, come on, 15. So seven is a wash, eight and I will take damage. Nothing. Fourteen, six is a wash, seven I take damage. Oh, this is going so well. So that's 18 for me, so he's 10 for a wash, 11 for me to take damage. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get killed by an ogre on the first damn street I walk up. Why did I do this? Six, seventeen. So he needs nine for a wash and ten to give me a pasting. Or to continue his pasting. Finally, finally I have done him some damage. Come on. Really, he called. Oh, fifteen for me. Seven a wash, eight I take damage. Oh, now we're all going my way now. That's my luck of seven. Have at the ogre. Sixteen. So eight is a wash, nine I take damage. Yeah. I've got him now. And I only lost half of my stamina in the process. 15, again, 7, a wash, 8. <sighs> this was such a bad idea. And he's got nothing in his house anyway. 18. So he needs 10 for a wash. Come on. He's down a 1. I've got him. We can win this. As Heroic adventurers that we are. That's six, seventeen. He's got eight, so he needs nine. Oh, thank God for that. I bet it says, oh, you can stop here and, and have some um, provisions. No, it doesn't. It says, if you defeat him, turn to page 71. Oh, I could have attacked, escaped. I didn't read that bit. Still, I would have stayed and fought anyway. The ogre's room is full of cluttered and discarded bits and pieces. It does not appear to have been tidied for years. Rummaging through the jumble, you find a polished wooden box with a hand made of white shell inlaid on the lid. The box is locked and you cannot find the key to open it. If you wish to smash it with your sword, turn a 324. Or I can leave it. Oh, obviously, I'm going to smash it. 324. Ooh, so I've got two gems, 15 gold. I'm absolutely loaded. I wonder where the Port Black Sand Whorehouse is. Um, a white silk glove lying amidst the broken pieces of wood. If you wish to try on the glove, 10 to 89. The thing with the, with the helmet, that gave me extra skill, didn't it? Uh, like extra attack strength. So I got lucky with that one. Am I going to get lucky twice in a row? This is why I hate these games. I can't do these games. Somebody else play this game and tell me how it ends. I'm going to try it on. 89. Because if it's like a magic thing I need, then I have to take it, don't I? I don't have the option to just put it in my back backpack, so I have to take it. As you slide your hand into the glove, it seems to come alive and cling tightly to your hand. Then it changes texture and becomes hot and you feel as though your hand is covered with burning tar, which you are unable to shake off. Mercifully, it cools down, but a 
thin white film remains on your hand, making it difficult to open and close. Lose two skill points. You curse and leave the house to head north. So now I've got no luck or skill. And I hardly got any stamina. 282. On the right hand side of the street you see a large wooden barrel and a small boy sitting beside it on a stool. If I wish to talk to him, or I can continue north. Everybody else has been so friendly, my luck has to change. 119, I'm going to talk to him. The small boy smiles and thrusts a tin mug into your hand and tells you that the barrel contains sparkling water which cures ills, wounds and diseases. To fill the mug costs three gold pieces. If you wish to drink the water, turn to 233, or I can keep my gold. I've got plenty of gold, I need everything else. So I'm going to give him three, I'm down to 44. Turn to 233. The sparkling water is refreshing, but not as medicinal as the boy claimed. It's just another scam that I've fallen for. Add one stamina, and then head off north. So uh, at least I got one stamina. I'm shaking my fist at the boy in mock anger and setting off north. Why mock anger? I'm just angry. I'm angry with everybody in the city ripping me off or trying to murder me. Oh, the street takes a sharp turn to the left and continues west for some distance. Turning the corner, you are suddenly jumped on by three short, stocky assailants who are hiding down an alleyway. Two grab your legs and one tries to knock you out with a cudgel. Test your luck. If you are lucky, you manage to avoid the blow. If you're unlucky, I'm going to get knocked unconscious, which you know is going to happen. I've met, what, five, six people in the city, and not a single one of them has been, like, nice or helpful in any way. They've all been horrible. Is that why it's called Sea of Thieves? Assuming I survive this, the next person, who I mean, I'm just going to stab them. I'm going to kill them. Testing my luck. I need seven or below. just absolutely so not only do I have to lower my luck but I never actually pass the only luck roll that I'm gonna get with a better than 50 50 chance on it so I was unlucky I've been knocked unconscious turned to one three four people play these for fun apparently hmm you wake up feeling dazed with a large lump on your head your backpack lies open by your side and you are annoyed to discover that all of your gold has been stolen those thieving dwarves you stand up and set off west down the street i seem to recall saying something stupid a couple of minutes ago 15 gold i'm absolutely loaded and now i've got none none at all and i'm heading west down the street Next person I see, I'm killing them. I'm just going to attack them and kill them. And then I'm going to take their gold. And then I'm going to spit on their corpses. 396. Ooh, the left, the left side of the street is a flower shop. The window is filled with exotic and colourful flowers. If you wish to enter the shop, 145. If you prefer to keep walking, 10 to 24, 145. I'm going to go in the shop. And I'm looking for a way to rob it. So inside the shop, an old woman is busy watering the flowers and plants. She looks up and smiles, saying, Good afternoon, my name is Mrs. Pipe. Can I interest you in one of my special flowers? If you wish to see what she has to offer, 293, or I can leave the shop and head west. That I can't afford it, but I'm going to see what she's got, because obviously I want to murder her and take what's in the till. City of Thieves, after all. I'm just another one. She explains that she has just picked one of her golden flowers. There are ten golden petals on the flower, and you are told that if, you, if it's dipped in dog's blood, each petal plucked and thrown on the ground will change into a gold piece. Mrs. Pipe asks for any magical item, piece of armour, or food, two provisions, in exchange for a golden flower. Look, if it's going to turn into gold, I'm going to take the golden flower... I mean, I think that I should really be able to give her my old helmet. And, um, do the provisions earlier. But what I'm going to do, just in case the game actually, you know, doesn't think that I should be allowed to do that and, and just hasn't made it completely clear, I'm giving her provisions. And then leaving the shop and heading west. And I'm hoping to bump into three dwarfs. 
Ah, there's another shop on the left side of the street with an iron grill over the window that prevents me from seeing what kind of shop it is. Trying the handle, I see that it turns. I can enter or I can continue west. So I'm going to enter. This is going to take forever if I enter every shop, isn't it? But I'm going to enter this one because it's obviously a mystery. Once inside the shop, you realize why the windows are barred. It's a jeweler's shop. Standing behind the glass counter is a huge, bald headed man with an eye patch covering his left eye. He gives you a welcoming smile, but the sight of his ugly mouth with its few black stained teeth does not inspire confidence. A large battle axe hangs conveniently behind the man to deter any would-be robbers. On display are several ornate rings inset with diamonds, emeralds and rubies. The man asks whether you are buying or selling, will you? Ask the price of the rings. Offer to sell him gems. I've got gems, haven't I? Or I can attack him. Now I did say I was going to attack him. But if I kill him, then it's probably going to be like, oh, you can't sell your gems now. But at the same time, perhaps I need them gems later on. I'm going to try offer to sell them, but I'm not ruling out killing him afterwards. So you show the man the two gems. Holding them up, he examines them carefully with a magnifying glass. He tends to face you and offers you nine gold pieces for the two. If you wish to accept the offer, turn to 240. If you wish to haggle, turn to 345. I'm going to haggle, obviously. The man frowns and thumps his fist down on top of the counter, shouting, This is not a bazaar. If you do not like my prices, take your custom elsewhere. Now get out of my shop before I slice you in two. Everybody's so friendly in this town. Like if you're in a market type thing, then you're expected to haggle. I and mean, you're not going to accept the first offer. Anyway, I'm going with the original plan and I'm going to attack him with my sword. Turn to 170. Oh, I'm in real trouble. The man sees you drawing your sword and snatches his battle axe off the wall. He walks around the counter to fight you. He's got... <laughs> He's got skill of nine. He's got... <laughs> He's got more skill than me. He's got almost as much stamina as me. I've got my plus one, which makes us even. And plus one for the magic helmet. Oh, God. This is, I'm going to die here, aren't I? Right. Four. So he just needs four or five, then. Ah, I'm down to nine. Seven. All right, down to six. Come on. Ooh, eleven, nice. Four. I'm, I'm getting him down. I'm getting him down. This is not too bad. Nine. So he needs nine or ten. <sighs> Eight. So. Oh, he's hit me. All right, come on. Ten. So he needs. Oh, come on. So yeah, so that previous one was a wash. This one is, I got 11, please don't get 11. <sighs> one more hit and I've got him, but my stamina is so low. Oh, 11, that's handy. Come on, snake eyes. <laughs> so I've killed him. I'm down to seven stamina myself now, so this is desperately poor. If you win, turn to 114. I'm hoping to come out of this with some some good cold hard cash okay so there are three bejeweled rings so i've got three rings I've still got my gems and i've got 13 gold pieces no wonder he only offered me nine he's practically broke take what you will i'm taking everything i take his battle axe as well and i'm continuing west 196 at least i've got some gold 
13 is not brilliant, but it's some. I arrive at a four-way junction in the street. The street continuing west changes its name to Key Street, and the street running north and south is called Market Street. Looking north, you see a crowd of people walking up the street, cheering loud and waving their arms in the air. Do you, you decide to follow them? I don't have any choices. Which was one of the three options that I had at the start, wasn't it? But it looks like you can't go back and explore the other two, so hopefully I haven't missed anything important. As you catch up with the chanting crowd, you see that they are carrying eggs and rotten tomatoes. Soon the street opens out into a large market square. All around the edges are stalls with vendors, hawkers, musicians and entertainers carrying on their business. In the middle of the square is an elevated pillory. Above the noise of the crowd, a trumpet sounds and the crowd starts to pelt the man in the pillory with rotten food. An old woman standing next to you offers you two eggs to throw, not wishing to appear to be an outsider. You take the eggs and hurl them, but as you do so, the old woman picks your pocket without you noticing lose one gold pieces or any one item you may have. Unaware of your loss, you walk away from the crowd to look at the various stalls. So I have lost a gold piece. Easy come, easy go. Literally earned them on the previous page. I'm down to 12 and I'm scammed by yet another person in this city. <sighs> I don't even think that we've really started. Do you know what I mean? It's like, that is... I, I haven't found Nicodemus yet. You know that Nicodemus is not going to be like, oh, thanks for finding me. He's going to be like, I need your help, stranger. Let's go fight Zamba Bone together. He's not going to just... Or he's going to go, oh, you've got to go find me a magic sword and a magic shield and a magic... And it's just going to be... Anyway... I really mustn't complain because people play this for fun and I've had a, a mildly good time. 287 actually says that I can restore some stamina by paying but what I would actually do is if I can eat um, by paying then I would just use a provision and gut that because that would give me actually more stamina anyway. So I hope that you have enjoyed watching me struggle 